Ladies and gentlemen, can we have a round of applause for the panelists? So I think we have a, a very diverse uh, list of panelists today. Um, please uh, kindly share with the, the audience um, which company are you working for and what are the uh, project about and some of the activities that you would like to share to the audience. Um, maybe uh, share it with the audience uh, where you're from and all base as well because I think we have a, a few people like myself flying into Thailand today. So because the angle of the, the panel today is it's, it's good that we can hear some application or some news and some development outside of Thailand as well. So let's not limit everything to Thailand, but let you keep it uh, broader. Um, so uh, first, let's start with the last person who got introduced. I think we start with you, Tom. Yeah. Sure. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Tom. Uh, I've been in the uh, blockchain space for five, uh, six years now. Founded the first uh, Bitcoin company, uh, very similar to Coinbase, but in Thailand, called Coins. That's the other page, in 2013, and we gradually grew the company. Uh, you know, three, four years, and eventually, uh, this company called Project acquired your group, and now I founded uh, Bitcoin Group. We are the largest uh, blockchain startup in, in the country. We are a company of about 100 uh, people, and probably the most profit, profitable uh, blockchain company in Thailand. Under our group, there are three three companies. The first one is a fully licensed cryptocurrency exchange. Uh, we account for about 90% of all the uh, cryptocurrency transaction in Thailand at the moment. And the second uh, company is a blockchain solution. So we push blockchain beyond finance, beyond the money system. So we develop blockchain solutions for governments, uh, private companies, and publicly listed companies. They are also our clients. And the third company is a blockchain economy. Uh, so we educate the public, B2B, B2C, about uh, you know, blockchain technology, how to open accounts for, for, for retail customers, how to trade. Uh, so overall, we're about a team of 100 people here. Uh, we're currently the largest group in Thailand. Uh, pleasure to meet you all here today. Thank you, Tom. Uh, next, JD, we have you. Yes. Uh, my name is JD Salvego, and uh, I'm the CEO of Legion Ventures. It's a uh, token and market advisory. Uh, I spent a number of years in the business industry basically doing investment banking within crypto and bringing a lot of US companies and European companies in Asia and bringing uh, Asia companies into Europe and uh, in the US either for uh, fundraising through crypt crypto capital markets and right now through digital securities uh, or just to expand their presence and grow their market share. Thanks, Sharon. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Sharon Lee. And I head up sales for R3. So R3 is a leading enterprise blockchain software company. Develop uh, and we develop Coda, the blockchain platform developed specifically for businesses. Um, the way we started our company is quite unique from other companies. Um, we actually started with our customers first. So it's like unlike most technology companies, we started with a product. We actually started um, working with our customers. We were, R3 was founded in 2015 in collaboration with our customers, which include some of the world's largest financial institutions. Um, we actually um, started, we, are, we have many, we, at AFRI we believe blockchain is um, dependent on the network effect. And so we work with more than 300 members and participants in our ecosystem across um, different industries, both in the private and public sectors. So in Thailand itself, we, um, the six large Thai, largest Thai banks are actually our members. And we are all we are working with them on a number of projects uh, and initiatives, including um, the project Internon um, with Black Bank of Thailand. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Sam. All right. Um, my name is Sam. So I'm from Kungsi Bank, um, company we call the Yellow Bank in Thailand. So we are the uh, Mitsubishi Financial Group, MUF team, one of the largest banks in Japan, who also invested in Coinbase in, in Silicon Valley. Um, so I have two hats. So one of them, um, I'm running the Kungsi Finnoway company, which is a corporate venture capital and the Kungsi um, groups. So we invested in, in um, startup across the Southeast Asia. The other part is I'm the head of innovation for the consumer business of Kungsi. So we are working with the mobile application and AI. So, um, so we are working together for, I mean, for the future of the blockchain under the bank as well. 
And last but not least, um, uh, it's myself, Chris, actually uh, from Infinity Blockchain Ventures. Uh, actually, we're part of Infinity Blockchain Groups with headquarters in, in Singapore. We have, uh, I ran into uh, a few of the, the, the panelists here around the space. Uh, we have offices in Japan, Hong Kong, China, Vietnam, where we have our product labs with uh, probably more than a uh, big at the moment. We have uh, 300 blockchain developers uh, in Vietnam. And we are a little bit on the uh, media as well as the capital side, like uh, JD as well. So we do um, ICO advisory um, as well as you know, like uh, part of the STO uh, consulting as well. And actually, uh, for Thailand, actually we have the, the honor of uh, getting involved and in support one of the uh, regulated exchange uh, in Thailand as well, which is uh, Zimax. Um, which is uh, one of our investment portfolio as well. So today, uh, once again, thank you for all the panelists um, to come and share uh, with us. Um, let's let's you know like let's start with you know like what is the best application maybe under your company or under your group that right now you're working around the space of uh, financial and, and capital market. This one we shouldn't. Uh, have to is this one charging? So what exactly happened then? Sharing any I can speak on the capital market side. I mean, most yeah. most issuance companies and exchanges right now are really yeah. on, uh, on Ethereum, right? It's probably the most secure. It's uh, what is one know, at the current moment is one of the most scalable uh, and protocols. And, 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 you know, now they're starting to work on sharding, um, and it's just kind of standard now. A lot of you know, a lot of on the capital market side, of companies wanting to uh, digitize securities, and either on a secondary market on the exchange or on a, a, a tokenization platform, which they tokenize the security and the assets, and then you can issue it to a primary market, just like a standard, almost like an investment bank, a traditional investment bank with a tech arm, right? But you know what, what's gonna happen, just like with every other protocol that's going on right now, we still have major scalability issues, right? So we're still, I don't know, five years, I think, three, five, seven years out, away from actual real mass adoption, I believe, within these blockchain systems. Um, Tezos is making a run up right now. It's starting to become a really popular one on, on, on capital markets for digitizing securities. Hyperledger is another one that's very popular. I know, uh, I think it's Liquify out of Hong Kong. They're buzzing, they built up in uh, Neo, if I'm correct. And you know, a few random ones. But it really, it's Ethereum right now and Hyperledger are the most popular for digitizing securities. Uh, I look at Sharon and I think she got something to say about it as well. So Sharon, maybe you try to... I'm sorry. <laughs> I should have mentioned... Yes. Yeah, so I think out of the, a lot of the, the popular platform out there, actually R3 is sitting next to JD and he completely forget well, about we were, it. Well, by the way, we're talking about capital markets specifically. Yes. You guys haven't entered that much. I know you have... I think, I think you got some, something to share true. as well. So Sharon, can you share it? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, I mentioned you in, in one of my articles that got published, so... <laughs> so share it, maybe you share a little bit on trying to counterpoint with you, yes. with JD, what do you think? Yeah. In fact, I think um, for Africa, um, capital markets, trade finance, um, KYC, um, these are all the top key industries. Um, you know, although we start our financial services, we have more, not expanded over um, to other areas as well. But capital markets, we, we do have uh, quite a number of applications there, and I'm talking about applications that are, some of them are live, some of them are going to live, to be live production. So um, just a few that come up to my head is um, the Swiss Stock Exchange has actually developed this Swiss um, SDX, Swiss Digital Exchange, are uh, running on Coda. So the whole end-to-end -end life cycle of a trade is actually um, developed and will be running on the Coda platform. Um, other than the matching and the um, trading part, which is running, still running on NASDAQ, but we built the API gateway to Coda as well. So um, we've started working with them for about a year ago, um, and it's due to launch in um, early 2020. And the first phase will be uh, digitizing um, or tokenizing ICOs and, um, and putting it on exchange to trade. And second phase and third phase will include um, tokenizing unbankable assets. So assets like um, bridges, um, infrastructures, um, fine arts, you know, they can all be tokenized and be put on exchange. For, and, and it allows a broader, um, wider, it opens up to a wider group of um, people who wants to trade, men on the street who wants to be able to trade. And putting it on the blockchain, putting it on the ledger of Coda, um, also allows you to open up more assets as well. In fact, um, 
the, the whole gamut of like, assets that you can now tokenize is not just securities. You know, it includes um, all other assets that you can think of with fast cars as well. You can tokenize and put an exchange. Um, so that's one case that is uh, we are actually launching uh, very early next year. And the other one, um, I mean, we also work with um, 20 over plus regulators um, in R3. Our, our ecosystem includes uh, Bank of Thailand, MAS, uh, HKMA as well. So as you know, we've been also been tokenizing and digitizing um, central bank money and putting and allowing the participating banks to actually do intraday um, bank settlements. So this is another um, live use case. Uh, this is another uh, case as well. Um, we have projects done with MES, Project Ubin. We have HKMA, um, Project Lion Rock, and also Back to Thailand, Project Internet. And in fact, we are looking to go into production, um, um, you know, with the aim to go into production um, as soon as possible. Thank you, Sharon. Uh, before I go to Sam, you want to close up and maybe I check with Tom, you know, like from your uh, product house, right, the one the blockchain company, what do you feel like when you're engaging with the enterprise side, like what are their demands and kind of wish list, you know, like on the financial and capital, uh, you know, like um, side, uh, is there any clear direction or demand from the Thailand market or somewhere else that you know that you can share? Sure. Uh, I think the timing is very important uh, in terms of the market readiness. What is possible now in terms of market uh, participants, uh, we see that the remittance project is a big win in this field. Right now, uh, our exchange partnered with uh, Ripple, uh, the Ripple Net uh, system that allows you know, uh, money transfer to happen at a, an order of magnitude cheaper than the current system. For example, for example uh, the Purple Bank uh, in Thailand uh, presented two weeks ago that they are able to transfer money from Thailand to the UK within 30 seconds and almost zero fee, zero cost. So uh, I think soon Thai people will be able to access remittance at about an order of magnitude cheaper using digital currency as a transactional protocol on the back end. We are planning to humanize the whole process, right? And what is another project that is, I think, that is already ready at, at this moment is uh, we are using our exchange as a uh, you know a front end customer facing part for foreign uh, foreign customers to be able to get access to to bank accounts here in Thailand. Uh, for Thailand, we are very fortunate because uh, our bank account penetration is doing is really high. Banks are doing really great in terms of providing bank accounts. Uh, very different from Philippines and, uh, and you know Indonesia, right? So we are trying to solve another issue for foreign customers that are not able to get you know, access to traditional banking by acting as a layer on top. Uh, we are launching a you know, crypto debit card soon, and foreign customers can keep their funds in USDT stablecoins. You can treat us as a bank account, right? But people can still cash out on any ATMs in Thailand without a bank account because you're, they are using us as a layer on top of all the current banking infrastructure, right? Or even there's a cardless ATM option in Thailand. For those uh, you know, tourists arriving in Thailand every year, Thailand is a very popular tourist destination. Right. In the near future, people don't need to pay for their forex uh, money exchange fees anymore. They can sell their Bitcoin, they can, they can keep their funds on stable coins, stable accounts on Bitcoin. And when they need to cash out, uh, we'll send them a secret six-digit password and they can walk to any ATMs Put in the six secret six password code, and cash will come out. You know, around Thailand without investing in ATMs. So our our vision is not to reinvest in the capex that banks have been invested for years, but acting as a layer on top to get easier access to financial service, to provide easier access to to the financial excluded uh, portion, uh, including unbanked uh, individuals in Thailand. I think, that's, I think that's the, the proper way to, to, to talk about you know like inclusion in, in, in banking and everything. But I think just just follow up uh, one question on that. To be able to do that, I think you I mean the, the banking or the, the, the financial system need to have a very strong KYC protocol in in, uh, in part, right? Because you now you're talking about people, you know, like withdrawing the money from USTD or Bitcoin whatsoever. So it's very important. I mean I just like to share with the audience, it's very important for central bank or whoever allow I mean you to do those kind of thing it's very important for them to understand that who are these people right it, it has to be there right 
Sure. So it's I mean, because we don't want to make it sound like yeah, anyone who have the, the debit card can actually just go out there and withdraw money. Um, you need to be KYC. You need to be uh, very fine. Is that correct? Sure. I mean, we are a fully regulated exchange. We are considered ourselves yes. as a financial institution. Right. So every account must be properly KYC. But we're using the KYC, you know, technology. Uh, and you know, we are working closely with all the government entities uh, right. in, in Thailand. So we are, you know, everything is. Fully so the debit card will go under the exchange uh, as as a project and as the uh, the whole base of the the accounts, right? The debit card. Everyone okay. has to uh, KYC and the debit card account first in order to access these different financial services. Actually, to that would link to I think Sam would provide you uh, better information. Uh, soon, I think the bank, you know, all the, all of the banks in Thailand came together and started your company. And ERA, the government agency, is the leader in this project, uh, pushing out the EKYC initiative. Yes. Uh, I think Kim San can tell you. I think I'm gonna go get one uh, debit card like that. Mm -hmm. So Sam, go back to you. Okay. Share, share with us more like. Uh, so from Hong Si Bank point of view, right? Uh, okay. What is the movement that you observe, and maybe you touch a little bit on the EKYC that sure. uh, sure. mentioned as well. So um, we add all from the from the two part, which is the country initiative and itself of Kungsi initiating. Apart from um, Sharon mentioned about the uh, internal project that we are part of the project to build the uh, crypto bank for the internal project and now we are working uh, um, on the end phase three already. Just completed last week actually. <laughs> and then we uh, put the uh, remit the money between Thailand to Hong Kong, HKMA. So that part of the, um, the work with uh, three. So the other two parts, uh, so the first one that uh, Tom mentioned, uh, we call the project called NDID, or National ID Project. So this is for basically for the uh, EKYC uh, initiation, initiating, which we, um, all the bank in Thailand, including the uh, corporate towns, social fund house, insurance company, invested in this company together, the, com the company named NDID. So uh, we, I think we probably invest about 500 million baht to help the country on the EKYC infrastructure. So right now, all the, um, all the, I believe in not longer than February the next year, then we will be launching the EKYC for uh, banks opening accounts, um, credit card and personal loan um, applying digi digital lending. So all the top banks in Thailand will be our customers, uh, offer customers to apply uh, on the EKYC, fully digital, no need to go to a physical branch anymore. And the laws will be, I think, uh, will be convinced and will be affected by very soon. So um, if you pass on the EKYC, the Thai people will be accompanied for the e-signature at the same time. So people, one might get worried about how if the someone um, um, stolen our um, um, KYC, stolen our ID, will be be compliant on the e signature side. So e signature will be affected um, by uh, next February too. So uh, this is will be a big change in Thailand, and this is using on as uh, Tom mentioned, it will be using on the blockchain platform. This is a real blockchain using all the bank together. Example, if I have the, um, if I want to open the uh, account for, suppose for K-Bank, Kasikon Bank, I have already Kungsi Bank. I just download the K-Bank, K-Plus mobile accounts. And I say to K-Bank that I already have um, K Kungsi account. Suddenly when I, I click on Kungsi accounts um, on the K-Plus one, on the blockchain immediately it will be popped up onto my group C bank account, mobile bank account that okay, Kun Sam, is is you, Mr. Sam, who has already open would like to open Group C Bank uh, K Bank account. And then with it, if I say if I give consent and say yes, it will be automatically EKYC. Yep. The Kung C Bank will send automatically to K plus K Bank account and I can open the account immediately. So it's a big big change in Thailand in February. That was the initiative on the The other one has been launched um, together among what we call blockchain, BCI, 
the blockchain community uh, association of Thailand. Mm -hmm. Among the 22 banks to, together in Thailand, I mean, all the banks in Thailand form up this company, and we are part. We are one of the five companies who invested in this association to build a platform under Hyperledger uh, platform to build the first project. Already been launched since uh, mid of this year. So we launched what we call electronic letter of guarantee. Mm -hmm. So in in the old day, um, if someone would, would like to get in LG letter of guarantee, it need to take about um, two two days to confirm between the um, two banks. But right now, with, in this blockchain platform, e electronic LG is already ready within half a day, so you can complete all the transaction and you get the uh, electronic LG and you can use it for your business purpose. Therefore, the two part, for the two part for the country initiative, which all the bank in Thailand, luckily we can talk together under the uh, maybe some uh, enforcement from the Bank of Thailand. That we ask everyone to talk together. Luckily, um, the other um, one initiative that we um, two actually we are working on the uh, blockchain right now for the bank. The first one basically uh, similar to talk mentioned also a the cost. Border remittance. So we are partnered with Ripple to um, uh, remittance between um, Thailand to Laos and Thai, actually Laos to Thailand and um, Thailand to Singapore and Singapore Thailand right now. So in Laos, we already commercialized uh, two months ago, which a long period of POC, but now we are we already in, uh, come out from the sandbox already from the Bank of Thailand. So right now, all the Laos company can remit the money from uh, Laos to Thailand within a uh, few seconds from now to Thailand already. Uh, so it's helped a lot to um, um, like the petroleum, um, to some of the petroleum companies would like to purchase some petroleum from Thailand. In the old day, they have to wait until the confirmation of the payment, which are, they are using SWIFT, which normally taken about two days, two, three days, and maybe the oil price already been changed. But now with the ripple technology, just few seconds, you can ensure mitigate the risk of the exchange rate risk. So um, it's a few feet faster than you should. So Singapore already done. The last one that uh, we are working right now and we are heavily... I think Sam is using everything under his sleeve. So yes, yeah, the really last one. So we're trying to keep up with all the products right now. I think we're on number yeah. 80 right now. The last one is some all exciting <laughs> example. We, we need to let it out. We need to yeah. let it out. Uh, the supply chain blockchain platform. So we are working with uh, one uh, they call um, Cement, Siam Siam Cement Group, um, which is the uh, second largest um, cement in Thailand. So um, we are using the AI plus blockchain for those uh, for those constructions. Normally they all have to order the cement, but normally when they do order the cement. They just um, put on the live platform similar to what apps. Mm -hmm. They said, I want this cement, the green bag, and it normally broken down on the communication. They send the wrong bag to you because green, they have many green. Yes. So we are using the AI computer vision to take the photo of this uh, cement, and we can know exactly what type of cement they are ordering. And then everything will be put into the blockchain. So from the headquarters of this uh, cement, they know exactly how much each construction and sub buying the cement from them. So this is part of the... Um, One thing I'd like to interject real quick before we move on, because my spidey sense of the education side is going to creep in. You guys mentioned the USDT, right, a lot. And, and I think it's this should be addressed, at least if we're sitting here, there seems to be a lot of new people in the industry in this, uh, in this audience to address that there is a big inherent risk with using anything to do with USDT moving forward in the future because we know that it's really truly not fact. That has been confirmed through multiple times and multiple changes of legal languages publicly on their website and it's not sure. And then also we know the whole, whether it's true or not, it's, there's some really huge analysis of, uh, of the market manipulation with USDT and Bitcoin. Um, that is yet to be, some say it's proven. I read the new recent 20 page report on that. It looks pretty true of how they're manipulating Bitcoin. But right now, USDT is a stable coin. Stable coins are supposed to be backed by real assets. USDT and Tether, their exchanges are not truly backed. So 
you know, hey, it's capitalism, everyone wants to make money, people gotta cut corners, it is what it is. That goes against primarily what this blockchain technology and Satoshi Nakamoto, Nakamoto created Bitcoin out of was, I'm American, our country screwed up the entire <laughs> global financial markets. And Bitcoin was created out of that, the consolidation of power, market manipulation. And so I just felt like we needed to address this, the USDT thing. Uh, there's many stable coins that are being developed right now in the works with either countries or this. And I think the next two, three years, we'll start seeing real, you know, non manipulative, non high risk so stable maybe, coins. Yeah. So thank you for that. So maybe we go to our last uh, question. So do you see a future? So fast, right? right? Because of you, Sam. Oh, okay. sorry. Yeah. Many, uh, too many use cases. Yeah, yeah. No, it's good. I think in this in this panel we should have more time. But the last question, uh, outside of stablecoin remittance or any any other uh, example, do you see any other example of token within the banking or the capital market itself? Think of one. Like, give us a very short answer. No need to describe how does it work. Okay. The JP, the JP, the JP coin. That's big, right? Okay. So you already answer. So done. Top, go back. Top. For for us, we we're not just innovating the capital market. Like, innovation is just like an incremental improvement, but we are disrupting. Yes. We are redefining the whole system. Yes. We're now. What is Bitcoin? Bitcoin is actually a stock exchange to my own. We can list pretty much tangible and intangible asset and trade anything in, in, in the same manner as stock. So we can have trade, you know, condo, real estate, you know, as stated, all those tangible assets. We can also show tokenize like you know uh, intellectual property. One example. Yeah. Yeah. So intangible assets, like intellectual property, brand reputation, trade them in the same manner as stocks. Yes. Technology is already possible, and the SEC is working on you know revamping the uh, the regulations right now. Yeah. Sure. Maybe one example. Maybe. Yeah. So we actually have a partner that actually tokenized gold and put it on uh, put it on Coda for exchange as well. So just one example that we've done. Sam, I think you lost your turn. So, uh, seconds, so I just talk to talk. So we're interested in STO, and probably next year, if everything will be for the SEC will be legalized on the STO, but especially on the real estate in Thailand. So we're not, we are looking forward to seeing that and supporting that too. Oh, actually, I forgot to mention about that as well because I we 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 are in the STO advisory, and actually yeah. uh, we believe that we have the first uh, legalized uh, STO on, on real estate uh, in the entire region. And the value of the project is 100 million at the moment. Uh, we're working uh, with uh, one of the constructor company in Vietnam, a listed company. Um, so we would love to come to Thailand and share our knowledge and our know how uh, yes, to uh, Thailand uh, SEC as well. Um, uh, I give one, one, one of my example on, on token as well. Actually, we, we do something similar. Um, I think you mentioned about the uh, tracking on the petroleum. Uh, but uh, in Malaysia, actually, we're working together with Yamaha right now to do uh, tracking on the second-hand uh, uh, luxury bike market. Mm -hmm. Because the more information you know about your bike, see, your secondary bike, uh, the more you're willing to pay higher price uh, for, for the used bike. Uh, and actually, right now, we are in discussion with R3 on how we can uh, use that uh, for the client as well. So, look like we don't have uh, the, uh, question, um, the, 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 the question from the audience for the panels. So I think with that, I think we can all get ready for lunch. And thank you, uh, the panelists, Thanks. once again. And uh, let's stay on stage uh, to take one photo and receive uh, receive from uh, some gifts. Oh, we do have time for a question. Uh, we just have 30 seconds. Maybe one question, if you have anybody from the audience. We can take one question. Please raise your hand. As you probably know, like you know, Bitcoin and all the other crypto uses just like an insane amount of technology, like something like the country of Switzerland for Bitcoin. Uh, I'm just wondering, like, when do you think the public good of blockchain for all these different services will outweigh just the like massive amount of tech, uh, electricity it uses? I mean, we're, we're paying so much, like, in, in economics, we call it debit loss to intermediaries or middlemen or money funds for, for anything, any kind of transactions. With the blockchain, we can reduce debit loss, right? 3% uh, on credit card fees for globally. That's already exceeded the electricity cost uh, of Bitcoin. That's an easy uh, you know, solution.
Just one. I think it also depends on the protocol, right? The yeah. blockchain protocol. Yeah, like for Coda, it's actually a, a peer-to-peer private yeah. blockchain. So it doesn't consume energy, and it's, because it's scalable and it's private. So it doesn't consume um, energy like Bitcoin mining or Ethereum as well, or public blockchain. Yeah. Totally different. I think it's uh, totally depends on the protocol. Yeah, yeah. Well. Bitcoin, you know, the mining for that is the size of some countries. Yeah, for the, actually the rest of them. All right. So I think with that, let's close the panel once again. Uh, give our panelists a, a good applause, please. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes.